Okay, so this story, I told you our story today was going to be about an animal that liked to eat corn. Hi, we were ready. covering all those numbers on our corns earlier. This story is a story that comes to us from Asia. Remember that yellow piece of land on our globe, Asia? The story is called Daisy Come Home. Daisy. Guess who Daisy is? The turtle. Or actually, I should say, it's a chicken or a hen. They call a girl chicken a hen, and she is a happy hen. And this little girl's name is Mai Mai. Mai Mai. I know, it's a different name, isn't it? There aren't too many too many kids in, in Michigan that are called Mai Mai, but she's from Asia, and that's the name that some parents give their kids there. Okay, so Mai Mai works on a farm, and she has all of these chickens, and they she takes very, very, very good care of her chickens, and all of her chickens are happy. Almost makes me want to be a chicken on Mai Mai's farm. Okay, so let's listen. Here is Daisy in her happy hen basket. And this is the title page. It says, Daisy, come home. Okay. So look over the garden wall and you will see the six happiest hens in China. They live in Mai Mai's sandy yard by the Lee River and they lay brown eggs every day for Mai Mai to sell at the market. But it was not always this way. Hmm. Sounds like there was a problem on the farm. Once upon a time, the smallest hen, the one my Mai calls Daisy, was picked on by all the other hens. This is hard to imagine because my Mai was known far and wide for her happy hens. She gave them treats. She put fresh hair in their hay in their nests. She gave them baths when they fell in the black mud, and when she called, go, 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 all of her hens would run fast as their little legs could carry them back to Mai Mai. Can you guys call the hens like Mai Mai? Go, 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 Even Mai Mai's eggs baskets were painted with big red letters that read, Happy Hens and she tried to make it so. But every night when it was time to roost in the hen house, the other hens picked on Daisy. They fluffed up their feathers and crowded her off the perch. They jostled her until peck, one of the other pushed her and thump, she fell off. Then the hens tucked their heads into their feathers and went to sleep while poor little Daisy was stuck below on the damp mud floor, shivering and cold until the morning. Do you think that filled Daisy's bucket or tipped it to get knocked hey, off no, of the no. perch? It tipped it. That wasn't very nice. Yeah, like last morning yeah. they got through my favorite car. One day it rained all day and the hens stayed inside. When it got dark, they flew up on their perch, except for Daisy. She had had enough of pushy hens and cold, damp floors. She went outside to find a place to spend the night. Down on the riverbank, she spied one of the market baskets. She snuggled in and fluffed up her feathers to stay warm. Daisy was sleeping and didn't see the river creeping up from the bank, all from all that rain. And when the water reached her happy hen's basket, she didn't feel it float out onto the river. So it rained so much that the river got higher and higher and higher, and all of a sudden the basket started to float away with Daisy inside of it. That's a problem. But when the basket started tipping and bobbing, Daisy woke up. She peeked out and saw a watery world all around her. The sandy yard, the garden wall, and Mai Mai's farmhouse looked smaller and smaller as the current carried her down the river. Finally,
Finally, the basket bumped against a stone jetty where a houseboat was tied up. Scratch, scratch, scraped the basket as the river waves pushed it against the sharp rocks. Here's a picture of the houseboat. A dog was sitting up on the deck of the houseboat. When he saw the plump hen bobbing in the basket, he barked wah, 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 and scrambled toward her. Daisy squawked and pecked and beat the air with her wings. It was enough to tip the basket off the rocks and she floated away just in time. I wonder if Dog thought that Daisy would make a good lunch. Dawn broke over the Guy Mountains as the basket drifted along the river. Branches brunched against it, fish swam silently by, and the birds flew overhead. And suddenly Daisy felt a thump. I wonder what she bumped into now. Daisy looked up and saw two big horns and a pair of surprised eyes looking down at her. The basket had drifted into the legs of a great big water buffalo. He was taking a morning drink. The buffalo snorted loudly, <coughs> scaring Daisy. She flew forward and nipped his furry muzzle and flap, flap, flapped her wings. Daisy scared the water buffalo. He turned and galloped up the bank, scattering the ducks as he ran. His splashes made waves that carried the basket back into the middle of the river. Oh, she's floating again. Daisy traveled along all day until her basket was hooked by the roots of a banyan tree, where a troop of red-tailed monkeys lived. The curious monkeys eyed Daisy and cried down for a closer look. Daisy froze as one of the monkeys crept up to the basket and reached in. Daisy flapped and pecked and nipped and squawked. That startled the monkey and he pushed the basket away. It broke loose from the tree and floated on down the river. Daisy wondered what would happen next. She's just floating along. Floating, floating forever. Uh-oh. Mm. Up ahead, Daisy saw a fisherman with cumarants diving all around his bamboo boat. These birds are called cumarants and they're fishing birds. They were catching fish and taking them to this man for a reward. The fisherman felt a soft bump behind him. Thinking it was a cumarant, he reached back and grabbed. <gasps> How surprised he was to see that he was holding a head instead of a cormorant. Finders keepers, he exclaimed. Little fish, big fish, silver wish, white fish. That's what I sell at the market, but today I will have this tender young chicken. He put a net over the basket and headed to shore with poor Daisy inside. He wants to take Daisy to the market and sell Daisy. For what? For money. Oh no. Oh, at home my Mai had looked all day and all night for her little Daisy. She wasn't in the hen house. She wasn't behind the farmhouse. She couldn't fly over the wall. Where is she? My Mai wondered. Worried all the time about what had happened to Daisy. Finally, she knew that she had to go to the market. With a sad feeling, she packed her eggs in her basket and started on her way. As the basket swung back and forth, the red letters on the side of her baskets made my Mai feel sadder and sadder. Happy hen, she said aloud to herself. What about my daisy? Where can she be? So, the fisherman was taking Daisy where? To the market. To the market. Where is my my headed? To the market. To the market. I wonder if they'll see each other there. There's a possibility. At the
the market, Mai Mai found a place and arranged the eggs in a clean, sweet-smelling straw. All morning, shoppers bought her fresh brown eggs, but she couldn't stop thinking about her little lost hen. Mai Mai heard a voice calling to her. It was her friend Zhang, this boy here. He was yelling from the back of a bike cart. A fisherman has a happy hen's basket, he shouted. What? Mai Mai said. A happy hen's basket, he repeated. You'd better go hurry because he's showing off what's inside. <gasps> Daisy, Mai Mai shouted. So Mai Mai raced to where the fish were sold. There was Daisy, right over here, beautiful and plump in her basket, surrounded by a crowd all wanting to buy her. That's my hen, she cried to the fisherman, but his face was like stone. Hmm. She pointed to the red letters on her basket. Happy hen, she said. The fisherman crossed his arms. Finders keepers. What's he going to give Daisy back? No. What is Mai Mai going to do? Mm. Mai Mai was about to leave, but her eyes rested on those letters. Happy heads. That's all she could think about was Daisy in a cooking pot. So she her eyes shut and she clenched her fists. She knew she had to do something. Guess what she did? Invited. Guess what she did? You guys have to help me. Do you remember how she called Daisy? Let's try it together. Let's try it again, one more time. She said that at the top of her voice, and when Daisy heard that call, she answered it the way she did every day of her life. She rose up and threw herself against the basket, tipping it over. She ran toward her friend Mai Mai as fast as her little legs could carry her. Daisy flew into Mai Mai's shoulder and off they went, running back to get Mai Mai's basket and go home. So they're running really fast. Hurry, 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 hurry. You think Fisherman's gonna follow them? Yes. The Fisherman ran after them furious. Stop, he yelled at Mai Mai. That's my hen. Was it really his hen? No. no. Guess what Mai Mai said back to Finders keepers, she said. And with Daisy clinging to her, she ran and didn't stop until they were safely back at the farmhouse. Phew. Oh my goodness gracious. That night, as the sun went down, Daisy took a place on the roost. Uh-oh, we never solved this problem yet. Remember all the other hens were picking on her? when one of the big hens fluffed up her wings and spread out, expecting Daisy to fall off the perch like always. Guess what Daisy did? She stood up tall and she flapped her wings. She said, I learned that from a boat dog. She clucked and then another hen tried to tip her off. She pushed right back and said, I scared a water buffalo like that. Another hen jostled her, peck, peck, peck. Daisy kept her place on the perch and beat the air with her wings. She remembered the monkey and she pecked and flapped all over again. That was when the hens gave Daisy a place of her own. So Daisy stood up for herself. She said, you can't push me to the ground because that's not fair. So when she learned how to flap her wings and peck, 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 the other hen said, okay, we hear you, you can stay. And you were kind. She just had to stand up to herself, for herself, right? Did that, did she did remember and she had to be strong. And she didn't let them push her around. The lap, lap, lap of the river made a
a peaceful nighttime song. No bumping, no jostling, no fussing around. Just six happy hens. Their heads tucked in their feathers, high and warm and safe together. Amen. 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 I agree.